All right, this uh, demonstration is going to be on the um, blade holder, um, Sketch 8. It's a multi-view projection um, sketching problem. Um, so use your same sketch border that we've done all along. Have your name, period, the date, revision A, and S8 there on the bottom. Um, so the part we're going to be doing is good at something like this. It's a... Uh, it's a rectangular solid, kind of like the blade, sorry, kind of like the um, special key, but um, a little different. Um, it's a little bit deeper than the special key. It's got a couple different cuts going on. It's got one coming from the front, a couple of holes. It's got, really, what do you call it, two on the side. It's got kind of one here on the bottom right corner, and then it's got kind of a cut there on the top left corner so it almost looks like kind of a z and then um yeah and then we're going to talk about a thing called a hidden line as well on these things um here's the part that i gave you in the book uh, something like that so they're giving you this is called an isometric it's a it's a picture of the part kind of tilted a particular way uh, it's based on a 30 degree axis so it's got like a 30 degree angle there and a 30 degree angle there anyway so it's a good way to show a part but not really good enough because we can't see the hidden features and stuff there um, you know the insides and the back and all that stuff so we have to use these things called multi-view projections okay so um, there's the part um, we're gonna make the front view get this going here we're going to make the front view kind of look this way, and then the top view, just like we did on the uh, special key, it's going to kind of go like that, so the top view is going to look like that, and then the right side view, you know, looking over from the right, will be kind of like that. Um, on all of these, I'm going to have you pretty much lay them out the same way. I'm going to have you box them, and then cut them, and then project them. So you're going to hear that quite a bit because that's that's the system. When we get into the CAD portion, we start using SolidWorks. It's going to be exactly the same process. You'll just be using a computer-aided design software to do it. All right. So that said, let's see. I would say that that is definitely longer than it is tall. Um, by the way, in the book, they give you uh, they give you the sizes. You know, like this is 425, um, you know, right there. Um, and it's tall 3. You know, right there. So, you know, you can take that if you want as well. Um, either way. So, this thing is definitely longer than it is tall. It's, it's not twice as long as it is tall. So, we're going to make that rectangle not twice as long as it is tall. Let's say about one and a half, give or take. So, one and a half times this way versus that way. Um, if you get the proportions right on these first boxes, it makes this thing a lot nicer. If the proportions are wrong when you first start, this thing kind of turns into a bit of a train wreck, you know, because everything is kind of wrong from the start. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and make that first box. Um, so we're going to make it one and a half times longer than it is tall. So longer than it is tall. And that's where you're just going to have to kind of look at the thing, just kind of, you know, how does it look to me? Does that look one and a half times longer than it is tall? Yeah, pretty good. I think I might go just a little bit longer there. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Okay. Now, we know every part, it doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter what shape it is, that the length of the front, so if we're looking at it, you know, kind of from the front view, and the length of the top are always the same. The length is the length, right? Again, we talked about if your house is 30 feet long and you look at it from the top view, your house is still 30 feet long. You didn't just get a 60 foot long house. It's still the same size. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that length and we're going to project it. Project. And project. Okay. And we're going to take the height because we know the height of the front and the height of the side are the same picture. You know, if you're standing up and you're, you know, five foot seven, um, and then somebody looks at you from the side, how tall are you going to be? <laughs> you're going to be five foot seven. You're not, you don't become five foot nine and all of a sudden, you know, or five foot two, you're going to be the same height. So when you have a part that's a certain height from the front, the height from the side is always the same. It has to be. It doesn't again? It doesn't matter what shape it is. If it's a round, if it's cylindrical, it doesn't matter. All right. So we're going to use that. So I'd like you to project the length of the front view over here. 
because our side view is going to be over here, and project the length of the front, and our top view is going to be up in this area. Okay. And by the way, these views are always in the same place. So that's kind of the industry standard. This is how people in Germany can look at a person from Corona's drawings and know what, what's, what's going on because we all do it the same way. All right, let's look at this thing. Um, let's do it this way. Let's go from the side view this time instead of from the top first. And it doesn't matter which one you start with, by the way. Um, look at that side view. It is definitely taller than it is wide. Um, if you look at the picture they gave you, Again, with the dimensions, they said it's, uh, call it $1.62. Use money for that. It's 1.625. Don't worry about the five there. $1.62, but it's three tall, which means it's almost twice as tall as it is wide. So when we make our side view, we need to have that proportion kind of, um, kind of there. All right. So here we go. Um, I'm going to leave a little space. Again, we'll put something in there later. Put it so I want this to be not quite twice as tall as it is wide. I see right around there somewhere. That looks about right. So, you know, like that. Again, don't, you don't have to erase these projection lines. That looks about right. All right. I'm going to go ahead and start a, a top view here. I'll put it right around there somewhere. Give myself plenty of space between the front and where the top is going to be. And we're going to take this corner. And line it up like that, almost like a driveway. And then here comes the tricky part. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick that might help you. Hopefully this goes okay with the camera here. If I take my pencil and I take my, the end of the pencil where the eraser is, and I put the end of the eraser on the end of the line, and then I put my thumb on the other end, that is the width of the, top, is the, width of the side, right? from the end of the eraser to where my thumb is. That is the width of the part. You could, if you wanted to, if you're not good at this kind of driveway thing, take this and turn it around there. See where my thumb is and see the end of the pencil eraser there? And then, yeah, that's the mark right there. That's it right there. A little cheater way of doing it. <laughs> and so that distance right there is the same as that distance right there. And then you just kind of hook them up. I want to see this line but if you need a little help doing it that way to start off with, I have no problem with that at all. And then go ahead and just make your line. It's really important that the width of the top and the width of the side are the same. Otherwise, your proportions can be messed up. And again, if this thing wobbles a little bit, you know, that's fine. I don't really care. You know, this actually would probably go more like that. But to be honest with you, I don't really care about that. Just make sure that this gets to there and it's the same. Okay. So our boxes are done. This is going to be our front view. This is going to be our top view, and this is going to be our side view, and this space in between we don't worry about. Okay. Um, on these, I usually look at the uh, easiest, biggest cut. So on this one, I think the easiest, biggest cut is this one right here, kind of on the top right corner of the front view, this big old chunk there. It's a, call it a 212 and a 1 taken out. So 1 is one-third of 3. Easy. And then this 2.125 is exactly half of the 4.25. All right. So halfway this way and a third down. So that's our first cut. So, oh, let's see. Halfway is easy. I'm right? just going to eyeball it halfway. About right there. And then we're going to go about a third away down. Let's see. Right about in there somewhere. It's probably about right. And then just lightly. Just like that. I really don't need you to erase it very well there. I almost like seeing those projection lines and make your cut. Then what you're going to do is once you have the change in direction, we're going to project. Project. And project. So box it, cut it, project. Now these lines are going to be I call it clues as to what's happening on this top view and on this side view. It helps us later on. It's a really good practice to get into. As these things get harder, you're going to really, really like these projection lines. They're, again, they're, they're going to help you with the solutions later on when things get hard. All right. So first cut, pretty easy. Um, I'm not going to worry about the holes yet. We'll come back to those holes. But you get the basic idea, right? You see the gap there. You see the hole there. All right. Um, let's do the side view. So on the side view, I've actually got two cuts. 
Um, let's go back to the picture there and we'll kind of take a look at what they gave us there. So the cut is 0.625 in and it's 0.625 down. Call that 62 cents, right? 0.62. Um, so a little bit, right? Um, so we're going to take that cut first. That's on the on the far right. And it's going to look something like this. Um, yeah, go down about there. We're going to come over about there, about the same amount. And we're going to go straight down. Like that. And then take out the material there. Come like that. It's our first cut. And our second cut, go back to the picture here, is going to be this cut right here. See the 0 0.375 and the 0 0.625. So it's not quite as not quite as deep coming on the other side here. It's only coming in 37 cents instead of the 62 like on the other side. So this one's a little bit skinnier. All right, so let's go back to the part there and let's do that. So it's actually up the same distance here as it is down that 0 0.625, but you're not coming in as far. Mm, let's see right around there somewhere. Like that. And then again, we'll take the uh, eraser, knock out that area. So, you know, there's our first cut and there's our second cut. So it takes on that Z shape that I was talking about earlier. Now you'll notice that this projection line that comes over here is still there, but it's really, no, there's nothing there. This is all air right there. So this line can't exist right there. And then there's also air in this space, so this line right here can't exist either. So it really can only exist right here. You're going to see why that's going to be a good thing for us later on. Okay, let's go ahead and do a little projecting. I'm going to take this first cut here and let's project that straight over here. I'm, I'm really not very good at going like from my right to my left. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tilt this this way. Total cheater trick, but don't worry about it. You can do that. I'm really good at locking my wrist and just kind of sliding down like that. But I really kind of stink at going side to side, going horizontally. If you need to turn a paper like that, knock yourself out. And then same thing this way. I could do this and go this way if I want. I can do that real lightly, I guess. But I'm, again, I would turn the paper if you're not comfortable going that direction. Just like that, nice and light. Super, super light. Okay, so then that's the pretty easy one coming across. Uh, now, here comes the one from the side view to the top view. gets a little trickier. So there's our cut. There's our change in direction, and just keep that parallel to that driveway right there that we created earlier, and just kind of bring that around. You'll do these faster as you get more practice, and then just bring that across. Try to keep that parallel to the to the outside line to the best of your ability. Again, if that's not working for you, you can always turn the paper around. And then we're going to get this corner here. See so this cut right here? We're going to bring that up. Keep it parallel with this. Bring it up, up, up. This is the tricky part. If you're having trouble with this, it's pretty normal. So, um, and I'm going to turn this this way. So I like going this way. I'm just going to bring that line across like that. So you should get something that looks kind of like that. It's starting to get a little bit messy, but I like it to look just like that. So you should you should look like you almost have six surfaces on the top. One, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like she'd have three on the front view. And then one, and then two on the side view. All right. Now this line's going to be going all the way up here like that, just you know, just nice and light like that. Okay. So now we have these clues. Like on the top view, we, all we really did on the top view is just project lines from the front and from the side. So watch this. First off, how many surfaces would you see from the front? And the answer is two. You're going to see this one here, and you're going to see this one right here. We're going to talk about these later. From the side view, how many surfaces would you see? And the answer is two. You're going to see this kind of upper part right here and this lower part right here. And guess what? There it is. I'm going to go ahead and just darken that because that's already solved. So one solid dark line. Bring that in. That line right there, and that's where the change is. So it lines up at the front view, kind of like that. And then how many surfaces would we see from the top? If you look at it closely, you're going to see that we see three. We're going to see this 
called a ledge right here. And then you're going to see this surface right here. And then there's a hole, kind of a cut, toward that back right corner. That back right corner is not there. So that isn't there. But see how we've already got it lined up? We, because we did our projection, it gave us a clue as to where those lines are. So now there's the, looks like we have five surfaces there. So I'm going to just take this out right now. We're going to bring this back in a minute. And then we're going to take that. So now we have that surface. And that goes all the way. So there's your one, two, three. All right. So what I'd like you to do, let's just do a little darkening here and make this thing a little nicer here. So we're going to go over there, like that. This comes all the way across, one solid dark line. Don't give me those little fuzzies. I don't want to see, I mentioned this on the last demo, don't, don't do like this. Don't go back over it multiple times like that, just getting one line. Using a .7 pencil would be the best way to do this because they're thicker and a little bit easier to run heavier lines on without snapping your lead. On this front view, we're going to go ahead and just get the main part here. like that okay so you know you make your your solid dark lines um, and we're kind of off and running now I need to introduce uh, a topic here it's called a hidden line so there are surfaces that are there that we can't see that we need to, to account for because if you think about almost anything you know you look at like your computer there's stuff on the inside you can't see it so how do you communicate that idea well you've got to represent it somehow. So one of the ways we do it is with what's called hidden lines. So if there's a surface that you can't see, we need to account for it. For example, on the front view, there is a surface behind it right here that we can't see. Sorry. That we can't see because it's hidden. That edge right there, we cannot see. Let me bring up the picture there if that gives you a little help there. So that back corner there, you, you can't see it. So um, how do we know what's going on in the back there? Well, we have to let them know. So what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a hidden line. So I'd like you to switch over to, a, to your 0.5 pencil. So you're going to want to have a 0 0.5 and 0 0.7. Um, and you're going to make these just a little thinner. And then the idea is you're going to use these dashed lines. Dash, 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 and dash. Make sure it finishes and finishes on the line. So it's a, just a series of, um, of dashes. And that's the industry standard for a line or an edge rather that's there that we can't see. All right. We have another hidden edge. Um, if you look at the top view of this thing, if I tilt this over, there's an edge right there, that change in direction where the surfaces of the holes start. Um, we can't see that because it's being blocked by this top surface. Again, let me show you the picture there. The, so you can't see, again, that corner right there as it comes across. This, this edge right here continues. It continues, but it looks like it stops there, but it doesn't. It keeps going. But we just can't tell because this thing's blocking it. So what happens on the part is that this surface doesn't stop here. Get back to my 0.5 pencil. And it continues. Dash, dash, nice, even, dash. Don't give me dots like this. Just dashes, nice, clean dashes like that. Reasonably straight. Okay, and shows a hidden surface. So this surface, we see it, we see it, we see it, and then it kind of disappears behind this uh, behind this chunk because it's, it, it, it disappears. All right. We need that surface. You'll see why here in a bit. Okay. All right. So we're rolling right along here. Let's talk about the holes now. The holes are pretty simple. Um, you know, they're circles. Um, there's, it looks like they're going all the way through. Right. You can see it right there for mine. They're going all the way through. Let's see if on the part you can tell. Would you bet your life that that hole is going all the way through? From this picture, if you bet your life, I would be like really afraid because I can't really tell whether the thing goes all the way through or just goes in just a little bit. Right? So we have to let them know that that hole goes.
goes all the way through. And this is the way we're going to do it. Uh, let's start with the holes. Um, back to the 0.7 pencil here. Um, let's start with um, putting the holes. It looks like they're uh, maybe center, center right around there. So this hole looks like it's in the middle of this chunk. So I think that looks pretty good there. I'm just going to nice and lightly there. But this over here looks like it's more to the left. So I think that's more maybe, you know, maybe like right around here somewhere. Definitely not in the middle of this, right, if you look at it. And then I'm going to use the free circle technique, which you've seen. And yeah, right around there, nice and light. Make this one the same size. Try to get that right in the middle. Make sure they look about the right size. One solid dark line. One solid dark line. Nice and clean, decent circle. And then what I like to do is I like to just take the eraser and erase that. And I'm going to create my, I'm going to spend a tally in here just a little bit. And I like to create my center line. And I'm going to use my 0.5 pencil. And the I, I think what I like to do is I like to make the plus sign first. And then just out and out and out and out. You saw those on the one view drawings as well. So multi-views, same game. Make your center lines. I think these probably line up. So we're going to go ahead and tell them that it does. If you want to, you can just use your eraser and just kind of weaken some of this extra center line. Kind of like that. All right, so that shows holes. It shows holes, but it doesn't really show them going all the way through the part. That, that if it was going in 0.1 inches, it would still look round like that. If this thing were, you know, halfway through, it would still look round, you know, and there would just, you know, there would be wood on the kind of on the bottom, right? But this one does go all the way through that surface. And you'll notice it's starting on this surface and it's ending on this surface. So for the purpose of this um, demo, I'm just going to put a little, just a nice light little A here, which means this is A, and this would be, call this a B, and this would be a B, and I'm going to call that a C, what a good idea, and that's a C, see how they line up, and then this last one, of course, we'll call this a D. I do this on hard drawing sometimes to keep, um, you know, keep the surfaces kind of lined up. So we know if those all line up, right? The A is the A, the B is the B, and so on. All right. Now, where do these holes start? Well, if I bring the center line across like that, and then I go to the bottom of the circle, not to the center line, to, to where the circle and the center line meet, the quadrant there, and then just kind of bring that across nice and light, keep it parallel, best of your ability, and then the same thing here. Again, if you need to turn your paper sideways, go ahead. Just keep that the same distance like that. So it's a projection. Now, the way this is going to go is there's going to be a center line, long, short, long. And then we're going to show the hidden lines. Now, the hidden lines can't be between A and B, and they're not, because there's, no, there's nothing there, right? There's error. They start at B, this surface right here, and then they end at C. They don't continue kind of in this gap back here because there's nothing there. So the hidden lines is going to be a dash, 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 and a dash, 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 like that. Don't let them go outside the part because they don't. So we're showing where the surfaces of the circle start and stop. Starts at B, ends at C. Right? Can't be from C to D because there's error there. Can't be from A to B because there's error in that area. So you can't have a hole in there. So that said, let's look at the top view. So we have our projection. I'm going to project this up the same way, nice and light. I, again, I lock my wrist and just don't, don't rotate your wrist like this. Just lock it and push. Nice and light, super, super light. Now, if you mess up, it's no big deal. And then nice and light like that. As you get better, you start moving a little bit quicker. But in the beginning, I want you to just, oops, just concentrate on trying to keep this parallel like that. Okay. Now, we know that the hidden lines, these two holes, go between B and C, and that's it. That's the only thing they do, which means on the top view, they go between B and C. So if I bring this hole up, 
you can see what's going on. There's going to be the center line, long, short, long. And then there's my dash, 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 going between B and C. And that makes sense, right? Between B and C. Now, remember that hidden line we created before? There's a surface there, and that's where the hole start, stops, right? On that back side, right? on the back side, that's where that hole stops. So we needed that surface. So we're going to show that center line again. Let's go here, one, long, short, long, and then dash, 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 and dash, 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 only between B and C. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the multi-view part. You know, if you have any extra, you know, stuff kind of hanging out, just go ahead and clean those corners up a little bit. But, uh, but that's it. Yeah. So take a look. Make sure everything's projected. I want you to keep these projection lines in. I want to see those. Um, they're they're light, but I can see them. And so when you give me the picture, um, the the actual part itself will kind of pop, and uh, the projection lines will just I, I can see where things came from. All right, and that is S8, the blade holder.